In this video, I'm going to show you how we can post an asset retirement without specifying a customer. I will also show you the way how to do it with a customer and also by scrapping in other videos in future. Before we will now post an asset retirement, we must post some values to the asset first, because otherwise we can't retire it. So let's navigate to application ABZO, click on this one. We will change the company code first, and then we can either select an existing asset or create a new one and post values to this asset. We will now do the latter one so that you learn how to create a new asset and post values to the asset in the same step. And once we posted values to the asset, we will retire it. So here we click on master data, then we provide an asset class. Let's say machinery and equipment. We can also create the asset with reference to another asset, but for now we will do it manually. We will say test retirement, just provide here a cost center. And that's basically it. You could always click on additional data and then you would be forwarded to the create asset master data application if you want to fill more values. But for now, this is fine. We will hit on back, click on create. Right now it's an internal number, but once we post here the values, then both the asset will be created by the system and also the values will be posted to the asset in the same step. We could also specify here that we want to post to specific accounting principles or depreciation areas. For now, we will leave it as is meaning that the system will post to all accounting principles and depreciation areas. We will insert a document date, the posting date and the asset value date. Please be aware that the asset value date is the most relevant date when it comes to the depreciation calculation later on. Then we will say that we will post 1000 euro as an asset acquisition. We could always click here on additional data to specify posting periods or document types. However, Normally those are derived from the transactional data. We could even insert a special offsetting account, but normally this account is derived from the asset class of our asset where we post the values to. Furthermore, we could insert transaction type, a trading partner, or even a business partner area, as well as a reference or assignment information. For now, this is fine, we will click on post. You can see here, multiple documents were generated, one for each accounting principle. And also the asset 200,030 was created. So far, so good. We will keep this number in mind and now we will post the asset retirement without vendor. Therefore, I will go back and here I will click on post retirement non-integrated without customer. First of all, I'm talking here about the application called ABAON for your reference and we will change the company code to 1010 again because there we created the asset before, insert the asset number and then we are already forwarded here to insert the document date as well as the asset acquisition date. And then we can fill here the accounting principle or depreciation area if necessary. For now, we will leave it as is. We must fill at least the document date, posting date and asset value date. And afterwards, we can select here that we want to post a manual revenue. So we must insert here the actual value of the revenue manually. Or we can also say revenue from our net book value. And if we would select here the revenue from net book value, then we would choose one of the depreciation areas over here. And this means then that the system calculates the revenue by looking at the net book value. So the value of our asset after all of the depreciation. For now, we will say manual revenue and we will post a revenue of let's say 500. That's basically it. Let's scroll up again. We can click here on additional details to define again our posting period and document type. However, as said, normally they are derived by the system and the other data like transaction type, trading partner number, partner business area reference and assignment are optional as well. We could also say we want only a partial retirement, meaning that only a part of our asset will be retired. And in this case, we would need to fill here the amount posted for the partial retirement, or we could also specify a percentage rate so that for instance, 10% of our asset value should be retired. Then you can see we have your reference section. So we can either say that this transaction relates to a prior year acquisition of our asset or that we acquired the asset in the same year as the one we are retiring the asset. If we do not fill any information over here, then this means that the asset will be fully retired. We even have a notes section to provide some notes and that's basically it. Now, before we click on the simulate or post button, let's focus here on this section. We can click on line items to inspect the line items that were posted to the different depreciation areas for this asset before. We can click here on multiple assets. So meaning that if we do so like that, we can actually define a whole list of assets that should be retired. However, as you can see, we can't specify lots of information then for the assets. We can only define here the assets with sub number if necessary, and then we must choose the retirement revenue as a manual one. For now, we'll leave it as is. Then you can see there's a section called additional account assignment where we could even include 
more cost objects like an order number or a functional area if necessary. You can also see over here that the profit center as well as the segment were derived already from the asset master record. As we inserted our cost center in the asset master and the profit center was derived by the cost center and the segment was derived by the profit center. So far so good. We can now actually click here on simulate to see this in action. Here you can see that the system would post a debit of 1000 so that our asset will be retired. Then we have here a revenue of 500 and the other 500 would be considered as a loss. So far so good. Please be aware that if you have any error messages, they would be displayed over here. But for now, this is fine. Also, please be aware that via this button, we can always change here the view between our different ledgers and currencies like that. You can see now the ledger group changed. I can do it again and it changed again. So far, so good. We will now click here on post and you can see two documents were posted. One for the asset retirement in our accounting principle LG and the other one for the accounting principle IFRS. Let's hit on continue. And now we will go here to menu, go to environment asset values. So now the system will jump directly into the asset values. And here we can see for our asset, there are no planned values for book depreciation anymore. And if we scroll down a bit, you can see exactly our transactions. So we posted first of all the thousand euro to this asset and then we retired the asset. So in the end now, there are no values on this asset anymore. What happens as well is that this asset is now automatically deactivated. So we can't post any more values to this asset. You can also see this if we try to actually post new values to the asset. So back in our Fiori Launchpad, if we go to ABZO again, or ABZON, you can use both of those and go to the right company code, then select the asset that we just retired. And if we are now trying to post some values to the asset, so let's say 10,000 euro and then hit on post, the system will inform us that posting is not possible as this asset is deactivated. You can also see this over here. And here you can see if you have such a case, then you might need to choose another asset, reverse the retirement document, this is also possible, or delete only the deactivation date. Let's quickly look at the latter one. So the deactivation date is actually set in the asset master. If we go to menu environment asset master in the general section, if we scroll down a bit, you can see the system automatically set here the deactivation date. So the best practice would be that if the retirement should be reversed, then you would reverse the documents. I would not recommend you to set here the deactivation on to no date at all. Okay, this marks the end of the video. I hope you liked it. If so, then please subscribe to the channel and activate the bell. See you next time.